Okay, here we again. So um, now I would like to talk about logging metrics and uh, logs events and metric collection for containers. It's like a project that I'm working on. And what I first will do is uh, stage what I need when I do the demo afterwards. And this involves uh, starting a couple of services. And there are no services yet. There, yeah, there are no services. And I have a Docker Compose file that starts a couple of services. So let's go like quickly run through it. So we have one Elasticsearch node, which is a master and a data node. So it's just a single standalone Elasticsearch. Then Kibana to view this. To, to look into Elasticsearch. And here I use the environment variable uh, QWatch Elasticsearch, which will be the service name of this Elasticsearch service. So I can just provide this, and then Kibana knows, okay, I have to access this uh, Elasticsearch cluster. And uh, then I run InfluxDB, which is uh, backend for, for, uh, for metrics. And here I use volumes, like I showed before. This will be populated with all the metrics. And if this would be in the union file system, then it would write to the union file system a lot. So that's not what we want. Grafana is just a front end for metrics. And then I run QWatch, with, which is the which is the daemon I want to present. And I will add. No, I won't. OK, so let's deploy this. And this will create the services. Okay, so services are created. They are slowly starting. And we will get back to them in a bit. So almost all of them are started. Anyway, go back to this in a bit. And then we switch to this one here. Okay, I said uh, metrics collection in containers. So when we, we saw this earlier, like the difference, dif difference between uh, machines, virtual machines or physical machines and containers. And the difference is that, or the main difference is that we only have one kernel, which means, and do I, no. Uh, which means that in this case, like the, the resources of the hardware is maintained or is, um, is uh, is, um, yeah, is maintained by the, the host kernel, right? So he knows, okay, I have four CPUs, and I know all the processes of my, my system, so I can schedule them like I think it's best. Maybe I do round robin or whatever. The thing is that the hypervisor abstract, abstracts uh, the, the guests of uh, the hypervisor, so if there is one, maybe we have four, let's say we have four CPUs, and this one, this guest gets one CPU, and this one gets one CPU, then the kernel here makes assumptions on like, okay, I have only one CPU, and then it will hand down the instruction like I showed before, and this will go down to the host kernel, and the host kernel will see the one supervisor, uh, one hypervisor process, and then will decide, okay, he wants to do this, okay, then do it like this. So we have uh, abstraction here, and we have uh, hidden resource consumption by the, uh, the hypervisor, and this is like not very, Performed. I mean, it's, it's performant in the sense like I think the overhead is maybe 5 or 10 percent, so it's, it's not terrible nowadays, but still you have this overhead, and you cannot get rid of this overhead of the hypervisor. In containers, you only have one kernel. Like, a, a container is basically just a group of processes which is isolated by namespaces and constrained by C groups, and uh, the kernel knows about all the processes of the host. So, uh, yeah, he gets everything, and, and hence he knows how to schedule the processes to make the most of the resources that are in the bare metal host. And uh, when you have traditional, uh, maybe I should go a little bit further, um, or maybe I can explain it a little bit on this other one as well first. Well, what's going on here? It's too fast. So traditional collection mechanisms, we will have like one agent here and one agent here and then one agent here and then you have to make sense who was uh, was uh, was um, was the reason why this was this resource was uh, re used for instance like CPU you have like one 
process running uh, on one CPU here and he is consuming 100% and then the host kernel runs on 105% and the other kernel and the other guest consumes also. So you have to make sure that you can align the resource consumption for all the different collected metrics at once, right? So if I collect this, me uh, this uh, metric like at sec second zero, this metric at second one, and this metric at second two, I don't know shit about who was using which slice of the overall host resources, right? And why, it, and, and, and as they are all independent agents, it's very hard to sync them. Like, you cannot, or you could have um, some Hazelcast Java application that like synchronizes it, but um, that's, yeah, that's cumbersome. And for containers, it's much easier because you could have one agent running on the complete system, and as all containers are only process groups, you can snapshot the the uh, resource consumption for the complete system, and then you can just uh, annotate the different process groups with the different container names or whatever, and then you have the complete history of uh, of the metrics or the resource consumption at one single point in time. And this, I think, is what I would like to to um, go at with my collection agent. And um, yeah, as we talked before, the containers should only have one scope, and they should also just not care about the external scope. So if you run a web server and the web server says, okay, I have now 10 connections, then you should just emit this metric to some collector, and he should not care about I'm host or I'm on host this and that, and I'm the container this and that. He should just emit a metric that is on the scope of the scope of his uh, application, and then the collection mechanism should take care of annotating the information. Um, and as I said, uh, the resources are, the resource consumption should be synced, or the collection of the resource, resources should be synced. And since we have only one kernel, if you ask the kernel something, then you can get the whole snapshot of all the resources at once. And the collection should honor yeah, some clock. So maybe you have a tick in your collection mechanism that says every five seconds, collect everything, so that you can compare CPU metrics with uh, block device uh, I/O, so that you that you can align the metrics very nicely. Or you have another clock that uh, provides this, but it should be synced to be able to align, to be aligned. And the agent, in my opinion, should be somehow a little ETL framework. So ETL is like uh, what is it? Extract, transform, and load. So like input, filter, and output, or take something, maybe transform it a little bit, and then push it to some backend. So it's like ETL, um, because you you could uh, aggregate information, you could relay information to a different uh, to different vendors, and this is what I try to to do with with this uh, little framework. And it's heavily influenced by Logstash. I mean, Logstash, who knows Logstash? A couple of you. So this is basically, in Logstash, you have input filters and outputs. And I called it differently to make a distinction, but it's basically like input and output. And a uh, collector just collects information, puts it into a pipe. Like, and in Go, you have Go between the channels, which is really nice. Uh, so it puts the information down the channel. And then the filter can apply and say, OK, I get this uh, log line, and maybe the log line is a metric. And then you transform it to a metric and push that to a metrics output. And um, yeah, what I want to achieve here is like different plugins for the different parts, so different collector plugins that gather inputs, filters who can process it and republish it, and handlers who can output it to something. And all the plugins should be able uh, to filter different inputs. So if a filter cares about logs, then he should only subscribe to the log block. And I will do a little demo. It's not uh, not, not many slides here, so I'll shut up in a bit. Just a um, question. Uh, there's a filter processor and we published data to the channel. So did this mean that it replaced it, or did this mean there's another data uh, output? No, no, it doesn't replace it um, because the filter doesn't know if someone else is relying on this raw message, right? I mean, there are optimizations that uh, can be done, and I have this in the last slide. Um, so I mean, now everyone, or the filter and collector, broadcasts it to every plugin available, which is not the most smartest thing. If you have a lot of messages and 
the message is broadcasted to 10 plugins, but only one wants to read it, so maybe we should, or I should, make it so that it's only broadcasted or pushed to one. But this is an optimization, so I should create a direct cyclic graph and require it anyway. And this is like the configuration of the thing. So I have collectors, so I, I have a little file that I can read, and I use the GELF um, input. GELF is gray log extended log format, so it's just a JSON log. And JSON is structured log. Uh, could be anything else, but I use this. Um, and then I have filters, and the reason, or the, the goal, the overall goal of this little example is to be able to output on standard out just logs, or events, or metrics to the same container standard out output. So as I said, I don't want to rely on any constraint from the outside world, I will just push it to standard out. And then what this will do, it will first try to um, use a grog filter uh, that hits where well, that matches OpenTCB metrics. And if this metric filter doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, succeed, then the next one will just inherit from metrics. So if metrics has already like tried to parse it and it failed, then it will try to parse it as a CEE log. So CEE log is just a convention for structured logs which is like just a, a JSON, uh, JSON blob with a prefix CEE, which is like interesting, but anyway, it's historic, I think. And I missed the at here, but anyway. And uh, if this also not uh, hits, then um, the log parser or the log metric, uh, the log grog parser will uh, hit, and this one will just use anything and says, okay, if it's not, a structured log, if it's not a metric, then it must be a log message, and then I will just uh, use it as a log. And yeah, and then we have the handler, so we have logstash, which will use logs and events and push them to uh, Elasticsearch. And then I have influxdb as a handler that only inputs metrics and then pushes it to, uh, to influxdb. And then I have logs. This will just log, will put it to standard out. Okay, and this is a little demo demo. We have to play to start. Maybe. Here we go. So what we see here is just my little Go script um, starting like starting up here, and then it starts the different uh, plugins. And as I have this log output, um, he will just output the metrics to standard out. And below. We see like uh, Grafana here and uh, Kibana here, the new one, Kibana 5, pretty nice. And uh, yeah, you see all the logs and metrics coming in here, and the logs and events, sorry. So we have the log here and we have the event here. Uh, and in my little stupid script, uh, everything, uh, uh, a multiple of 7 will be a log and all the multiples of 13 will be an event. And um, yeah, and this will we'll, we'll push to open at to, to Elasticsearch. And here, if you haven't used Grafana, it's also a very nice uh, dashboard, or it's, I think the, the nicest dashboard for metrics, because it will chart you the metric. Like, this is a random number metric here that's just charted. And what you could also do is you can annotate it with stuff from Elasticsearch. So, and I, and I think uh, the video showed the uh, the, the hovering over these different uh, pieces here. So if you hover over the green things, it will show you the lock. And if you hover over the red things, it will show you the, uh, the, the uh, events. Yeah, and the demo goes like this. Not quite. I think I missed Elasticsearch. Okay, so we don't have data points, and why don't we have data points? Because we don't put data in it. Let's just click away. So I start my stupid logger, and we have like this. And um, yeah. 
and this is the this is my, my little agent running in a container and now we should have metrics oh, the metrics are exactly okay yeah so this is the metric and when you hover over this uh, thing it will show you okay I'm a log and you can display it or not and then it will just log it and we have Kibana as well and then you can show different things uh, and you can show the name and you can show you can show the image name that's also cool and you can show this and we can show the source for instance so yeah so all the logs and if i log something else And this will show up. This one will show up as here we go. This one was the event, and this one was the log. And we have a different container name. Ah. And yeah, as I said, this uh, is my little pet project. I really like this ETL thing that's like from Logstash. And um, I mean, further work, there's much more that I put on there. But first, as I said, every message is broadcast to all plugins, which is stupid because if you have a lot of plugins and a lot of messages, then you will just push data around, even though I think the Go channel will just uh, provide the pointer to the memory. So maybe that's not too stupid, but it should be cooler, would be cooler if. Uh, before I start the, the whole thing, then I um, analyze who is subscribing to, to what and create a direct access graph beforehand and then um, only pops up what should be pops up. Then I should refine the types. Types are also like ugly. Um, anyway, and I should provide a sync source, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, more details. And the filters, I should provide more filters, even though the Grog filter is pretty cool. I mean, how many yeah. of you have used Grog? That's like RecX, typed RecX, which is pretty nice. So you can provide, you can provide, um, you don't like it? Uh, that's not well, what do you like then, RecX? So you can... Good variable, yeah. At least it's standard. So you... You can provide, or you, you create like a, a typed regex here. This is a regex, right? And then you can use this regex in another regex. And what's not to like on it? It's like it's awesome. Because as I showed in my the, the, the config, like I don't have to put the OpenTSDB thing here. I just put the OpenTSDB type here. By the other sure. And my 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 handles are not batching, so I put push every metric like to the backends like each metric is single metric is sent that's also stupid should batch it that's it yeah that's it Thank you. and maybe I can show you one uh, the code of one little shy shy uh, handler so maybe the gelf one it's really, it's just, this is the whole code of the thing. So it's like, this is almost like creating an UDP server and then oh, messing it up. <laughs> and, uh, and for each incoming uh, UDP buffer, I create a new message and then I push it to my, broadcast it to my shell and that's it. So it's pretty, pretty easy. And I mean, this is the most, the simplest one. It's just a log handler that listens to the data channel and, um, and this is a bit scary first but it's cool later because 
you can you can push any. So I, my channel is interface, so you can push everything to this channel, and then you can check um, when you receive something. You can check the type. So you can say, okay, that's a lock, that's a metric, this is something else, and then the lock handler can decide what to do with it. And I mean, this here I, I'm not checking, or I'm assuming that the type Q message is not good. Let's do it better. But you can uh, even create a new collector that creates some weird type, and then have one handler that can deal with this type. And uh, by having this, not this, but having this this switch, you can make sure that only when the handler knows about the type, he will do something, and otherwise he will just continue. So we'll just skip the message. Go, I like go. Uh, I, mean, I, I used to like bash and then it was ugly and then I tried to uh, use Python because it was less ugly, but then it became ugly and it became not uh, typed, so well, it was already not that, but, and I, I thought I, I need some static type language and go served me quite well so far because it tells me when something is bad before I start it, it's good. Okay, so let's yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay, cool. Thanks again. Stop here.